Good evening everyone, welcome to a brief old cyclone chases update on the 15th of February 2013. Firstly we're going to look at a satellite image of Australia today and we can see a lot of thunderstorm activity developing over the Kimberley and western top end and look this is pretty well a precursor to what we normally expect just before an MJO uh, approaches Australia so just before an active period of or an active monsoonal burst approaches Australia we start to see this uh, enhancement of thunderstorm activity over here in the northwest overall though this the entire cut continent uh, at least the northern half of the continent does appear to be quite active in terms of weather in general so uh, it won't be too long before we start to talk monsoon trough and and that monsoon trough then spawning some tropical lows off the northwest coast and eventually as we head into march it looks like it's going to be very active for the coral sea uh, so uh, fingers crossed that all of those things come off let's have a look at some of the latest modeling so firstly we'll look at the next four days. The next four days look like they're going to be pretty active along the coast of Queensland. So we're going to see a fair bit of shower and, and rain activity over here in association with a trough or weak low that might form off the north Queensland coast. Look, we're not looking at that uh, with any potential of a tropical cyclone development in that trough or low uh, whatsoever. But it will enhance the shower and storm and and general rain activity on the coastline anywhere to the south of say Cairns uh, and more more particularly sort of in the wet tropics coastline and the central Queensland coastline you might see a fair bit of rain there maybe either just on or just off the coast. Extending inland a little bit of this shower activity turning into isolated to scattered thunderstorm activity and also penetrating a little bit further south over central Queensland as well. Over the top end we're continuing to see very active conditions over the next four days with 50 plus millimetres over the Kimberley and 25 to 50 mils expected over the western top end and also heading into the Pilbara as well. Now on days four to eight, so this is from the 19th to the 22nd of February, we start to see the first signs of that MJO and the, and the monsoon trough now approaching the western top end coast and we're starting to see rainfall figures here increasing off the coast now rather than on the coast and we see that that's due to more than likely due to a northwest surge of the monsoon that's starting to push through on the uh, southeast Indian Ocean here and then we'll start to talk a tropical low at the after this seven to eight day period. We're also going to see some fair bit of activity here over the Gulf of Carpentaria and that's our secondary focus area for a tropical low is this western part of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Now look folks, this area here is really being devoid of rainfall this wet season uh, and extending into the northeastern parts of the territory so the best news for them would be the potential for a tropical low or cyclone in this region here uh, to finally give them some much needed wet season rainfall. So overall we can clearly see a pattern where the MJO is heading into phase 3 and 4. We're starting to see the southeast Indian Ocean really ramping up in terms of rainfall activity and we'll continue to see that pushing eastwards onto the Australian mainland uh, as February ends and then as we head into March. Well, What's our MJO going to do? Now our latest look at this from the this is the forecast based on the 14th of February, latest one that we've got using the European Ensemble and we can see that it's going to push straight across the Indian Ocean as fast as you can blink. Uh, and then it's going to start to stall around about the maritime continent. Now for Australia, the key area for it to stall is around that phase 5 or phase 6. Now if it can stall and slow itself down, so it, we don't, well, the last thing we want it to do is push as fast as it's going to push across the Indian Ocean. We want it to stall and slow as it gets into phase 5 and then phase 6 as well for Queensland particularly. But if it can stall in this region we're going to see prolonged periods of uh, potentially heavy rainfall, increased cyclone potential and this is taking us through to the last day of February we can see that it's just starting to get into phase six but it's really moving so slowly now if it stalls a little earlier than that it's probably likely to still be in phase five um, and so still likely to be affecting Australia a lot over this time frame so we're not expecting it to move very quickly once it gets to the 28th of February we're still expecting it to loiter in the Coral Sea uh, or, or the Southwest Pacific so we're looking at a 
prolonged period in Australia of moderate to heavy rainfall for the tropics and increased cyclogenesis as we head into March and even as far as mid-March at this point in time we're still looking at uh, fairly high potential for tropical cyclone development. And that MJO pushing eastwards is now a clear ind clearly indicated a, a low pressure system developing in most of the models or a tropical cyclone developing in most of the models here off the Pilbara coastline. This is next Friday. This is the ensemble mean. So this is uh, overall what the ensemble members are suggesting and it's going to be a lot more accurate than looking at one particular model run. Now, notice folks that as this low pressure develops here around my cursor, there's also underneath it a fairly strong low pressure system and associated upper level trough that's pushing in through this area here. So if a low develops or cyclone develops in this area come, come the end of next week, at this point in time its most likely movement will be towards the coastline. It won't shove off to the west. So at this stage if something develops here where this where this is showing us it developing it'll actually push quite rapidly even towards the southeast and possibly intensify further um, under the influence of favorable outflow uh, uh, above the system. So having a look at that let's have a look what the ensemble does to it on Saturday. And as suggested by Saturday we have the tropical lower cyclone here off the coast of uh, probably somewhere between Port Hedland and Onslow uh, and you know but still a fairly large error margin here of where it could be but this is probably the most favoured spot for it. Now that upper level trough continues to push in through here. There is a ridge in behind it though so if the low or cyclone doesn't make landfall say by next Monday, uh, not, not next Monday sorry the Monday after um, then the system might start to push back to the west but by that stage it should have already crossed the coast. As we head to next Sunday we start to see that the modelling is suggesting that it's now just inland of the coast, whatever lower cyclone was there is now just inland of the coast, probably south of port um, and by day 10 and by day 10 we do start to see a lot more variance in the guidance but overall general guidance suggests that if it has crossed the coast we now have a new ridge building underneath it and so that ridge will push the system in that direction there uh, back out to the west and back offshore so if it does make landfall there's a fairly decent chance that it might actually come back off the coast again after it makes landfall so at this stage we're not quite sure low or cyclone the the potential is probably 50 50 uh, but we are looking at particularly the broom to onslow region as the key area of interest at the moment over the next week to 10 days after that our next focus period becomes the gulf of Carpentaria and particularly so the western Gulf of Carpentaria but uh, at this stage too far away to suggest movement. So with this system here in the in the Pilbara or off the Pilbara we do expect it to push towards the coast we do expect it to if it does if it does actually form we do expect it to get close to at least making landfall at least impacting enough if it doesn't make landfall to create an increase in rain and storm activity. The GFS ensemble isn't as bullish as the European and so it doesn't develop the low until Saturday, next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday the 23rd of February. It develops it off the coast of the Kimberley and if we have a look there, they're also tipping this low uh, to, to be associated also with an upper level trough as well through Western Australia and with that happening it will push the system um, <laughs> either to this south direction or the southeast direction um, as you see there so it'll either push it southwards or southeastwards from that location that ridge building in behind it isn't going to be strong enough to push it to the west and you can see by Sunday it definitely has pushed southeast and is now approaching the coast around Broome um, to Port Hedland so a little bit further north than the European ensemble you can see here very very clearly under the influence here of an upper level trough um, you could almost you could almost draw a dotted line in fact of where the trough line will be and the system developing to uh, right along that trough line will continue to head in a southeast or south direction and by Monday the system uh, overall likely to have made landfall somewhere between Broome and Port 
as uh, but the, the interesting thing with all these modeling with this all this modeling is is that it's going to be a fairly weak cyclone in the lower end of the scale one two or three or even a tropical low as it makes that landfall so uh, there's not going to be a massive drama in terms of, of in intensity at this point in time there looks like there will be a fair bit of wind shear uh, going on at, at around about the time that this thing is approaching the coast so fingers crossed with all those things that it does across the coast as a fairly weak system come next weekend. Uh, once again though we start to see model divergence by about day 10 and, and we expect that that's 10 days out it's very difficult for models to get it right for 10 days out so we see some of them having it on the coast some of them have already got it starting to push back to the west under the influence of a ridge coming in underneath so look overall folks what we can say very high degree of confidence that there's going to be a tropical low in the northwest uh, in the northwest region and then there's a fairly high degree of or a moderate to high degree of confidence that that low will form into a cyclone and will approach the Pilbara or Kimberley coast or southern Kimberley coastline or the Pilbara coastline um, at this stage anywhere sort of east of Onslow is where we're really looking at focusing our our, our um, projections but you never know it it, it might it might push a little bit further to the west or it might push a little bit further to the east so overall folks that's the area of interest nothing happening in the coral sea in the foreseeable future but as i say coral sea looks set to go off in march so a little bit early at the moment we're only looking up a, as far as the 25th of february here at the moment so next weekend does look like it's going to be very active along the northwest coast it is time to just check your cyclone kits make sure that they're prepared just in case this thing does form uh, and does push towards the coast especially in that area between broom and onslow uh, which is where this next one looks like it's going to head towards. Alright folks, thanks for watching. We'll have another update next week.